Websites are getting more and more strict about the length and characters in your password, so it's difficult to guess, of course, but it gets to be a pain, right? Generating a random password can help with this process. So let's show you how to do that in FileMaker. We're going to start with the random function. We're going to go into the data viewer. Now, if you don't have FileMaker Advanced, you won't be able to do this, but you can still try creating the calculations inside of Manage Database. It just takes a little bit longer. If you don't have FileMaker Advanced, I'd highly recommend it because it's great because you have this one thing. There's, there's actually many things that it has, but this one thing here is a big seller. I can come in here and make formulas. So I'm going to start off with what's built into FileMaker, which is called the random function. There's no parameters. It just simply generates a random decimal number. And if you keep refreshing, you'll see that it's always going to be less than 1. It's always a decimal. So we can take that value and wrap it with the integer, or int, multiplied by whatever your maximum number is. And you see that at that point, when we refresh, we get an integer. We've multiplied it by 10. But you'll see that we get sometimes a 0 and never a 10. So to correct that, since it's less than, the random function is less than 0, you're never going to get a 10. But if you add plus 1, what will happen is you may get you know, 10.1, but it's just going to get the integer of it. So we're going to be good with this. So we'll refresh it now, and you'll see we never get a 0. We always get a 1. Sometimes we'll get a 10. There it is. But never a 0, sometimes a 1. I'm hoping to get a 1 here. It is random, so sometimes you may not get a 1 for a while. There you go. So now we've built a random number generator. So how do we use that to create our random values? Let's go ahead and see how we can do this. Let's use the let function. It makes it a little bit easier. Now, the let function allows you to declare values. It's very useful in making your formulas much easier. So we're going to say at, and we'll call this random. Now, what I've done here is I've declared at random to equal this value. That's so I can keep it separate and easy to distinguish and see what's the random value. Now, I put an at sign in front of it so that I can recognize it very easily inside my code below when I use it and so that I can use the word random. Otherwise, it would override the functionality of this random, but at random doesn't. So it's pretty cool what you can do. So we put a semicolon. That's been declared. You close off the let function there. And then you put in what you actually wanted to do. So if I just wanted the result of that, put at random here. And you'll see it gets it in there. We can see a value, a result of 4. But what we really want here is to grab some values out of a string of characters. So what we're going to do is say a, b, c, d, e, f, g, all uppercase. Excuse me if I miss one. x, y, z. Did I get them all? Uh, miss the x there. And then I'm going to do them all lowercase because, you know, these websites want upper and lowercase sometimes. So a, b, c, d, e, f. N O P Q R S T U V W X. Keep forgetting that X, Y, Z. You're not, there you go. And then I'm going to put some numbers in there, right? And then you can put any kind of characters you want in there. So let's say you might want to have an exclamation point and a tilde and a pound sign and an at sign, whatever you want to put in there. Just really going across all the numbers at the top. Enclose that in a quote. So this is a string right there. We're going to say, OK, the middle function wants a starting point and a length. So the random function is going to provide the starting point. I'm going to say a length of 1 because we only want one character out of there. I want to grab one character at a time. That's the starting of this random value generator. We're going to eventually put it into a script. For right now, we're just going to want to understand the calculation. So the problem is this is doing 10. So it's only going to go for the first 10 here. We want this to be the length of that. So let's take this and copy it and say at characters equals, paste it right in there. Once you do that, once you have two values declared, you have to have square brackets around it. 
just at the beginning and the end and then the semicolon. So now what we can do is put in at characters here, but we can also come in here and actually we need to swap these two. So we'll put this one, cut it, paste it there, hit a return. The reason why is because I'm going to refer to at characters and at random, so we have to declare it in this order. So we're going to say length at characters. Oh, close paren. So now we're getting the length of that. So whatever we change this one to, it's automatically going to know how many to multiply the random by. Pretty cool stuff. And let's get this back up there, fix that. There shouldn't be a semicolon there, just a bracket and then a semicolon. And it looks good. Let's see what's happening. It says, it says table missing here. So let's see what we're missing here. We've got that middle act characters, close paren. Let's see, it's just not doing it, so I'm missing something here. Ah, my semicolon needs to go right here. Love how it's giving me uh, accurate messages there, but I knew something was wrong at least. So let's monitor this. Refresh the values, and you see you get a different value every single time. So now we're grabbing all these values out of there. Now we're ready in the next video to put all this into a script and generate a calculator or a random password of any length we want.